Sweden is a surprising country. It's not just full of introverts and reindeer. It's also full of inventors. In this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 Swedish inventions that changed the world. Up until the late 1950s, seat belts in cars were just simple over the lap straps, but that changed in 1959. Over the lap seat belts were pretty terrible. People were often thrown forward despite the seat belt, and they also caused injuries. Nils Bolin, an engineer at Volvo, decided that that wasn't good enough. So in 1959, he invented the three point seat belt the type of seatbelt we all use today. This was an incredible step forward when it comes to driver and passenger safety. And safety was something Volvo was extremely concerned about. And they proved it as well by making the three-point seatbelt patent freely available to everyone in the entire world. It's estimated that at least a million lives around the world have been saved because of this patent. So the next time you strap on a seatbelt in a car, you can thank Volvo and Nils Bolin. The history of refrigeration is long and complicated. People used iceboxes for hundreds of years to keep food cold, and in the 1750s, the first artificial refrigerators were invented. In 1834, the first vapor compression refrigerator was invented, which functions a bit like air conditioners today. Then the first commercial ice makers were introduced in 1854, and the first home fridges came out in 1913, and so on. There were tons of evolutionary improvements to the fridge over time. But one important step came in 1922, when two students at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Carl Munters and Balthasar von Platen, invented the absorption refrigerator. It became a worldwide success and was commercialized in the company Electrolux. Then technology eventually moved on again, and Electrolux was superseded by other companies. However, you can still see absorption refrigerators in campers and trailers today. At one point, this Swedish invention was in households all over the world, but these days you can mostly see it in trailer parks. People in Sweden are quick to bring up the fact that a Swedish inventor called Gideon Sundbeck invented the zipper. And he did. Sort of. The zipper was actually invented in 1851, and an improved version using complicated hooks and loops was invented in 1893. But it wasn't until Gideon Sundbeck improved the designs and made them have a lot more teeth that they actually became practical. Zippers were first used in shoes and tobacco pouches, because clothes already had buttons and laces, and people saw no need to replace them. But human laziness eventually wins out, so soon zippers were added to clothes as well. These days, you can barely see any types of clothes that don't have zippers, and you can thank the Swedish inventor Gideon Sundbeck for that. Anders Celsius was an astronomer born in 1701 in Uppsala, Sweden, and he's most famous for the Celsius temperature scale. In the beginning of the 1700s, there were around 30 different temperature scales used all over the world. Fahrenheit was one scientist to try to make a standard temperature scale, but that one turned out extremely weird, so no reasonable country in the entire world uses Fahrenheit anymore. Celsius wanted something that was based around the freezing point and the boiling point of water instead. He came up with a scale that was zero when water is boiling and a hundred when water is freezing. He presented the Celsius temperature scale in 1742, and people thought it was really convenient, with a minor modification. After Celsius died, people reversed the scale because it didn't really make sense to count backwards, so zero became the freezing point and 100 became the boiling point instead. And that did the trick. Today, 95% of the world uses the Celsius temperature scale, except for those strange ones who still use Fahrenheit. Or Kelvin, I guess. People 
People speculate that the first matches were invented in China around the year 577 AD, but they didn't really become popular until the 1800s. Then you had things like ethereal matches and lucifers that were used to light things on fire. The problem is that all of those were quite dangerous and even deadly because of all the phosphorus that was used. That all changed in 1844 when the Swedish inventor Gustav Erik Pasch invented the safety match. The safety match split the reactive ingredients so that some were on top of the match and some were on the striking surface. This prevented unintentional combustion and made the matches safe for everyone to use. Or at least safer. You can still do stupid things with matches, of course. There's no way to completely protect people from themselves. Johan Petter Johansson was an inventor who was born in 1853 in Sweden. He started his career as an apprentice at the Munktel Mechanical Workshop, and he was apparently quite appreciated there. After working at Munktel for three years, he expressed a desire to move to America, but Munktel offered him any position in the company if he remained. He chose to stay on with the job title of inventor. He invented several important tools, both for Munktel and for his own company that he started in 1886. But his most famous invention came in 1892 when he got the patent for an adjustable wrench or adjustable spanner. The adjustable spanner became his most famous invention, and the design from 1892 is essentially the same spanner as you see in any hardware store today. Johansson continued to invent things throughout his whole life, but nothing ever came close to the elegant simplicity of the adjustable spanner. You sometimes come across the statement that Sweden invented the GPS. That's of course complete rubbish, but a Swedish inventor did something quite useful with GPS technology. Håkan Lanz is one of Sweden's most well-known inventors. He's credited with making the predecessor to the computer mouse, for example. He also invented STDMA, Self-Organized Time Division Multiple Access. It's basically a self-organizing way for multiple entities to communicate with each other over a shared channel. And this, in turn, is something that is used in AIS, Automatic Identification System. AIS is used in ships all over the world. It's used to monitor the locations of ships and to avoid collisions. It's also used in cargo tracking and a lot more. There are currently more than 40,000 ships that use AIS, from military vessels to rescue boats to commercial cargo ships. And while it isn't as impressive as the GPS, it's still a notable Swedish invention. The story of the candy cane is uh, complicated. What exactly is a candy cane? It's rumored that a choir master in Cologne, Germany gave his choir boys sugar canes in 1670 to keep them quiet during ceremonies. But are those candy canes? The candy canes we know today are mint flavored and not just sugar canes. Also, the old style candy canes were often completely white. The striped red and white design didn't really become popular until the early 1900s. And that brings me to the dubious claim that a Swedish woman called Amalia Eriksson is the inventor of the mint-flavored red and white candy canes. There's a really popular candy in Sweden called Polkagrisar, and those are mint-flavored red and white striped candies, often in the shape of canes. But to be honest, these types of candy canes are typically straight and not hooked. Either way, Amalia Eriksson invented this type of candy cane in 1859. So, at least in Sweden, she's recognized as the inventor of the candy cane. Or maybe I should say, the inventor of the polka gris. If you have a heart condition, then you've most likely heard of pacemakers. And if your heart is beating just fine, then you've most likely heard about them either way. A pacemaker is essentially an artificial device that sends electric pulses to keep the heart beating. There have been many different types of pacemakers, some that required to be plugged into a socket and some that were wearable. 
But in 1958, the first pacemaker implant took place at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. Inventor Rune Elmqvist had designed a pacemaker that could be implanted into a patient, and surgeon Åke Senning performed the procedure. This was the first pacemaker implant in the world, and the patient, Arne Larsson, lived until the year 2001. Unfortunately, it required him to have 26 different pacemakers throughout the years, because these first models didn't last very long. The first pacemaker lasted three hours, and it was changed to another one that lasted two days, and then they kept improving the design all the time. It might just have lasted three hours, but the very first pacemaker implant was still made in Sweden. Now let's talk about a very impactful Swedish invention, something that really blew people away. Black powder and nitroglycerin are volatile substances that can be used to blow things up. But people wanted to have more safe explosives. And Swedish chemist Alfred Nobel gave the world exactly that in the year 1866 in the form of dynamite. This was the foundation of modern mining and the age of engineering. It also led to military explosives, something that Alfred Nobel eventually came to regret. There is a story that Alfred's brother Ludwig died in 1888, but newspapers all over the world got it wrong and thought that Alfred Nobel had died. A French newspaper apparently published an obituary called The Merchant of Death is Dead, and that disturbed Alfred deeply. This eventually made him put aside 94% of his entire fortune to create the Nobel Prize, an annual prize for the people who have provided the greatest benefit to humankind. So dynamite was definitely a Swedish invention that changed the world in many ways. And that's about it. That was my list of 10 of the most interesting Swedish inventions. I hope you found it interesting. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.